There is no perfect success story. Ups and downs, injuries, bad and good impressions. It's a collection of everything. True art is to be able to appreciate yourself and to accept yourself. No one knows how many hours you spent training, how many injuries you suffered. No one knows what's behind the curtain. On the ice, we are all equal. When you succeed, it's a great reward for the work that you've done in the past. I'm Dennis Ten. I'm a figure skater, born in Kazakhstan. My country is very special. It's not very well known worldwide. It's only like 20 something years old. I'm 23 today, same age with my country. When I stepped on the ice for the first time, there was no idea of figure skating at all. We had no indoor rinks. We only had ice outside. We had no places to buy skates. I didn't have professional equipment until I was, I think, nine. I started skating when I was five. My parents, they asked me, what do I like more, figure skating or music? I said right away, figure skating. It was just something that I enjoyed so much and, and I loved with all my heart. When I was nine years old, my mom, she found a competition in Siberia. Somehow I went there and I won the competition. No one knew me, of course. No one knew that there is skating in Kazakhstan. That was the first time when I realized that figure skating is now my job. Figure skating is now, is now me. Dennis, he is great in everything. Strong in jumping, moves fast, very flexible, has great footwork. Psychology of figure skating plays очень большую роль. Самое главное — это свобода. Свобода движения, свобода в его теле. Познакомившись с Денисом, тем самым я понял, что с этим человеком можно сотрудничать и расти вместе. Он э, четко понимает, какую задачу перед ним ставят. Everything I do today is headed towards the Olympic Games. Even though I've been in the sport for a long, long while, I still learn a lot. Thinking about the games in Vancouver 2010, I didn't really know what to expect. Being recognized as a 16-year-old figure skier from Kazakhstan in Canada, it was a huge honor. It was not just that uh, I competed there, but I competed there for the first time in our history. It was a historical achievement for my country. After Vancouver, I closed one chapter of my book and, and started another. If we take Vancouver 2010 and Sochi 2014, comparing the Olympic experiences, it's two totally different dimensions. On my way to Sochi, I thought that I'm living in a reality show. <laughs> it was really something truly incredible. I had injury after injury, I had equipment problems, and I was in a car accident. Just two weeks before the games, I couldn't walk. And my coach, uh, I could see in his eyes that he's lost. Like, he doesn't know how to help me. It was a big issue for me, it was really tough. I knew how big the pressure would be, and everyone wanted me to win for my country. When I made it to Sochi, to the games, it was a very tough competition for me. I still remember the short program. I stepped on the ice. There are thousands of people cheering for you. People from Russia, like my schoolmates, everyone was watching me. All your friends, all your family, 
people are watching you. Uh, I, I, I uh, did a mistake on my first jump. At the most important event of your life, realizing that you fail, it was really hard on me. The night after the competition was the, the hardest night that I've ever had in my life. I basically didn't sleep at all. Everyone, of course, tries to support you, but you realize that at the end of the day, no one will be able to help you. No one can feel your pain. No one can feel your struggles. If you make a mistake, you made a mistake. It is you who is going to step on the ice and skate. Thankfully, I did not give up. Maybe that was my way of growing. We stepped on the ice for the second day of competition. It was totally new me, new day, fresh start. I saw Kazakhstan flags, I heard my name. It was, you know, literally like a dream coming true. They all stood up and they cheered for a little boy from Kazakhstan. When I was on the podium, I realized that the whole country cheered me on at the Olympic Games. I became like a symbol of the sport. I returned back to Kazakhstan. It was such a fantastic attention. I could see the birth of figure skating culture. It's going to be like first time in Kazakhstan when women is competing here. Skating became one of the most interesting and coolest thing to do in the country. Public eye sessions in Kazakhstan became one of the most popular attractions on weekends. They would go on the ice and they would want to be like me. Мне кажется, любой казах знает о нашей звезде от Дениси. По его рассказам, первое время, когда он участвовал в Олимпиаде, его даже как бы не то что не признавали, даже не могли сказать название нашей страны. Но сейчас благодаря ему множество людей, множество стран знают про нашу страну. Все в Казахстане, наверное, будут ждать эту Олимпиаду с большим желанием посмотреть, как выступит Денис. In my mind, of course, uh, I'm preparing myself for the Olympic Games in Pyeongchang, Korea, in 2018. I really dream to go and compete at the Olympics again. As I'm Korean, that will be my opportunity to perform in front of my home audience. My great-grandfather was a general. He fought for Korean independence. What would he think of me? Would he be uh, proud enough when he would see my accomplishments? This will be my opportunity to perform for him as his grandchild. And uh, that's why the games will be so special to me. In Pyeongchang 2018, I do hope that I will bring the special performance to Korea. Why is my story important? It is important because it is a real example of what our country can achieve in winter sports and what the whole region is capable of if we have the right resources and opportunities. I'm not here for myself. I'm here for thousands of young Kazakh athletes dreaming their own Olympic dreams. And I'm also here for that little kid out there alone, skating around somewhere on a frozen lake with skates supported by plastic water bottles.